Hello, lovelies. <clears throat> Got a bit of a sore throat. How are you guys? Hope you are well. Happy Friday, lovelies. Hope you are going to have a wonderful, wonderful Friday. I wish you well, and I hope you've had a lovely, wonderful week, been productive, that you've managed to get a lot of things done. And you know what? Looking forward to the weekend. I'm looking forward to the weekend. It's raining here in the UK, in the north of England. and But it's okay. It's nice and warm. You know, I'm sweating. I won't wear this nice um, <laughs> jumper dress because it's nice and cosy. And I thought I would do a bit more of a relaxed um, live for you guys today. And so, as I promised, um, I said I was going to come either on Thursday or Friday. Um, and so here I am. So I'll have to try and work out what's the best way to kind of let you guys know that I'm going to be doing a live. Um, you guys let me know in the comment box what's the best way that I should kind of keep you informed that I'll be going live here on um, platform. So let me know and I'll try and see if I can do it. I don't have any ideas yet on what to do. If I should kind of post it uh, maybe a couple of days before I go live or kind of, you know, I don't have time to send every individual um, a message to let them know that we're going live. So give me some ideas on what I should do on, you know, letting you guys know that I'll be doing um, a lot. So thank you for joining me today on another live. We're going to talk about today how to win friends on social media and crush it as a extrovert. On Wednesday, I think it was, we talked about how to win friends on social media and crush it as an introvert. Today, we're gonna to talk about how to win friends on social media and crush it as an extrovert. Also, I'm gonna do some Q and A. So we're gonna do probably half an hour, maybe, it might be shorter on the topic we're gonna to talk about today. And then I'm going to answer some questions. I sent out a message through social media, my Facebook and Instagram and all my other platforms for questions that people would like to pose to me. And then I was going to answer them here for you guys. I'm doing another live with another platform later on today. I'm going to do the same thing as well. So I'm wishing you guys well. How are you guys coping? Is everyone back to normality? after the lockdown, everyone back to work, or, you know, let me know what you guys are up to, where you are on your journey called life, you know, I hope you guys are keeping safe, I do know that, you know, things are opening up back again, I know on the 4th of July, you know, restaurants and pubs will be opening back again, a lot of people are excited about that, you know, uh, I mean, I feel for all those businesses that have been, you know, on lockdown during those times, you know, income's not coming in, so I know that a lot of them have done, you know, really well to be able to prepare themselves getting ready for opening back again i know where i live they're all painting up their building they're all decorating it and you know you wonder you know how are they managing to do that during lockdown but i know the government has you know given out some you know cash you know for small business owners and things like that so i hope you guys who have managed to acquire that are looking after it and you're being wise with your uh, money <laughs> you know so let's talk about how to win friends on social media and crush it as an extrovert we're going to cover around about eight steps eight topics on this subject again if you would like me to give you a pdf on the topics that i'm talking about do let me know by leaving a comment in the comment box and then I will, again, as per usual, send you a link and then you are able to download the PDF on all the topics that I'm talking about today. Because I cover quite a lot of information and you know subjects on the lives, I do know some of you don't have time to you know listen to all my conversation, all the topics and information I'm sharing here. So I provide for you guys a PDF that you can read in your own time, in your spare time, and you know, hopefully, and hopefully during that time, you should be able to, you know, read in your spare time the information that I'm sharing here, because it can be information overload at one time. So let's talk about it today. Again, we're going to talk about um, how you can, you know, win friends as an extrovert, because a lot of people think because you're an extrovert, it'll be a lot easier for you to, you know, maneuver the platforms, maneuver the different things that you have to do on social media. <clears throat> Far from it, you know, everything is all about planning. It doesn't matter if you're an extrovert or an introvert, 
doesn't matter your personality, your character, all we are trying to do as business owners, entrepreneurs, freelancers, self-employed, you know, we are trying to, you know, use social media to benefit our brand, benefit our business, and hopefully as well generate income through using social media. So really it's having a plan of action on what you want to do when you are going on social media. Because when you use social media, it's very tiring. Let me tell you, I've changed just in the last three weeks, let's say, my whole strategy on social media. And let me tell you, it takes time, even if you've got people to help you. If you even if you haven't, if you don't have a budget of what you are wanting to spend on social media to get your end goal, it takes a lot of energy and time, but it makes it a lot easier if from the beginning, before you even get started on, you know, growing your social awareness, growing your brand, growing you as an individual on social media, you need to have a plan of strategy. You need to know what you are doing. This will really alleviate all the stress and the worry and all the things that comes along with you just trying to get yourself out there. Marketing is not easy. Marketing is not easy. But you know what? It's worthwhile it's um fundamental as a, any business you know especially if you want to continue to grow you want to you know make sure that you are engaging you know you want to find more clients you want to network with other people you want to grow your brand you have to market we talked about it in lots of my lives you know if you follow me throughout different platforms I use the word showcasing because that for me and my clients makes it a lot easier for them to understand the concept of the reason why we have to showcase ourselves. We have to tell people about who we are. If we don't market, then you're not going to be able to stand in your crowded market or your saturated market with other people doing what you're doing for long. And that's why a lot of people quit. I think a lot of businesses fail because they are not willing or maybe they don't know how to showcase their brand showcase who they are so it doesn't matter if you're an extrovert or an introvert let me say this from the beginning learning how to showcase yourself being willing to showcase yourself will really help you go on that journey of not being afraid to step out there okay right the first thing that we need to do is when we're talking about how to win friends and crush it on social media as an extrovert is to get focused when you're an extrovert, you are, it's easy for you to be in a crowded room. You love talking, you love being the light, the, the limelight, you love people being in front of the camera, you know, it's, it's natural for you, you're comfortable. And sometimes that can be your downfall because, because it's naturally easy for you to, you know, use social media to get yourself out there, to, you know, tell your story, to showcase yourself. You can lose track of not being focused. You still have to understand why you are using social media, why you are out there in the first place. So you need to be focused because we're talking on the topic relating to freelancers, self-employed entrepreneurs, business owners and home-based businesses. You need to be focused on what you are wanting to accomplish using social media. Like I said before, social media is, takes a lot of energy, takes a lot of time, but you can eliminate all that stress and that energy by being focused on why you are using social media, have a game plan. And this will help you when you're an extrovert, when you are going out there to crave a mark, crave a space for you and your brand. Be focused. Now, let's go into depth of what I mean by being focused. Be focused on what platforms you're going to use and why. Because there's lots of social media platforms, but they do different things. Even though some of them might have some elements of the same thing. You have to understand that they all do different things. So you have to identify if you're going on a platform, what is your outcome? What are you wanting to accomplish from using a particular platform? So yeah, we know, we, let's say for example, we know all of them have, you know, um, where you can post your message, you can post what you're doing in that day, you can post your pictures. But we can know for sure, if I say now Twitter, what does what when you say Twitter, what does that come in your mind? You can know straight away. And if I say, for example, um, Instagram, we know that platform is completely different, and we know that the target market and people who use those platforms are different. So you've got to be focused when you are an extrovert, when you are going on that platform. You've got to understand why you are using that platform and what for. This is this is key and is important because this is one of the steps that we miss out 
you know, because a lot of people are doing it. I mean, a new platform that's just gone on t- uh, TikTok. Everyone's using it, their friends and their dog. There's nothing wrong with that, okay? Nothing wrong with using all those platforms. But for me personally, my time is limited. My energy is limited. So I can't be using any platform if I don't have a goal, if I don't have a, being focused on why I'm using it, because it's just going to be wasting my time. Because a lot of social media doesn't bring you income, doesn't actually turn into um, monetization. You can monetize it, if, again, if you're focused and you know what to do it. OK, but if you're just going on there, and just using the energy, using the time, you're going to wear yourself out. Like I'm not even on TikTok. I haven't even joined it. I'm not even going to do it for at least a while. I'm not one of those people that jump onto something straight away. I have a strategy. I look at my time. I look at my energy and I say, you know what, how is it going to help me in what way? Because it takes a while before you, you know, you see the benefits of social media. Social media works, but you've got to use it properly for you to benefit from it all right so the first one is get focused second one is find your lane find your lane we talked about this on wednesday when we talked about you know how to win friends on social media and crush it um and and crush it as an introvert because you know you need to know your lane you need to know who your audience are you need to know what your message is and you need to know what you are going to share to your audience what you're going to talk about how are you going to help them what what products or services are you going to give them to benefit their life because as business owners and entrepreneurs and people that we want to you know showcase our service and brand it's all about helping them it's all about finding what need or problem that they have and finding a way to solve that with our products our service and our brand so you need to find your lane i mentioned earlier on find your lane also includes knowing which platform to spend your time on most okay so for me i do again market research behind the scenes to find out which platform is working well for me because again i will not put my energy into a platform that's not giving me the benefit it's not um, getting the return on my investment as a business owner and as an entrepreneur so it's important for you that you find your lane find out who your audience are find out what you have to offer the earlier you can do that Again, the stress-free life you will have, the more easier and relaxed you feel when you're using social media, especially as an extrovert, because it's natural for us to, you know, talk to people, it's easy for us to connect, it's easy for us to communicate. But also, if we find our lane, then we're able to even do that more effectively rather than wearing ourselves thin. So from the beginning, before you can go on social media as an extrovert, find your lane, find who your audience are, find who your customers are, find out where they hang out, find out what they're talking about, find out what they want and need. This questions that you need to ask yourself before going forward and using social media. The third one is know your message. Doesn't matter if you're an extrovert, doesn't matter if you're an introvert, knowing your message is going to be key to you being successful, being, you know, crushing it on social media and also winning friends. Let's just, we talked about in the last video, you know, building relationship is a two-way street okay you as someone trying to find a friend you you introduce yourself you you know get and people to know more about you and then you find out about them as well it's a two-way street you both have to give and take i can't say it's a 50 50 percent it depends on the relationship depends what you're looking for but you know from the beginning as i mentioned be genuine as who you are as best as you can and you know you know show yourself we can't please everyone on social media you know, I've been using social media and some people have said some nasty things to me. Let's be honest. You know, you get some people who are just trollers, who are just negative, who just want to spoil your vibe. And they will say some really horrible things. And I've had that. I've had people say some horrible things to me, I've left comments on my um, social media platform. And you know what? I've got used to it now. I just ignore it. Because a lot of people, they're trying to trying to get you to be a puppet for them and you please them. And you can't. You've got to focus on, remember we talked about find your lane and who your audience are. Once you know who your audience are, focus on them. Don't worry about the other ones who come in there trying to spoil your vibe and say silliness that doesn't make sense. You know, focus on those people who want you for what you have to offer. They'll appreciate you more. We can't please everyone. So it's important that we know our message. It's important that we find our lane. And it's important that we get focused. All this is going to really help you distress you 
when you are using social media because we all know the content that comes through social media a lot of people say it's stressful they get poorly we know all the negativity through social media but there's so many pluses as well and i am an example of that there's so much pluses when using social media i've totally benefited from social media and again i'm being honest with you i'm not saying everything is perfect but you know when i do these steps that i've done in my business and in my life when i'm building my brand it's really helped me just distress myself and you know i've talked about as well i've taken time out of social media and i suggest that you guys do it as well if you're an extrovert because we're talking about extrovert you are going to be on there every single day you know it gives you a buzz you know checking what people left comments and how many people watch your videos your numbers matter to you what people say engagement matters to you as an extrovert but we have to be careful as extroverts that we don't get stressed and overwhelmed with social media so i take up time I make sure that I'm, I've got an app that you can put on your phone that just tells you how many times, and I think most social media platforms, does. I know Instagram does it, tells you how many times that you've spent on that platform. And so you need to be aware of how many, how many times that you're spending on the platform and make sure that you don't do, limit yourself to the point where you're getting overwhelmed and stressed. So take some time out. I've taken times out and not been afraid if I lose engagement, if I lose followers. Because it's all about self-care when we are going online, especially as an extrovert, because we don't know how to split our time up when it comes to us getting out there on social media. So it's important that you know your message, find your lane and get focused. Number four is listen more. As extroverts, we love to talk. We'd be like, we like to be life of the party and all those kind of stuff. But when we are trying to win friends, and you know, crush it on social media as an extrovert. We need to listen more, especially once we know our lane, we know our audience, we know what they want, we know what they need. We need to listen more because the more you listen, the more you can li hear little things that you can put into action that can also maybe grow your um, brand, maybe help you in the development of a product. The more you listen to your audience, and it doesn't have to be in a sense of listening to them in a sense of what they're saying about your brand and your business. Listen to them in a sense like joining the conversation. When you are finding your lane and you know your platform and you know, you know, where you're going to showcase what you have to offer, joining in the conversation is not all about them just, you know, you being in the front line. Also, you be in the back line, back line as well. There's a lot of people that I follow on social media that I talk to out of social media. I talk to them, never seen them face to face. Some of them I've seen through um, Skype, through Zoom, through other platforms, but not a lot of them I haven't seen, but I take up time to engage with them outside social media. And this is really good when we're talking about winning friends, because especially when you're starting out, you want people to know that you are genuine. You want people to know that you know what you bring to the marketplace is something of value and because we're not robots we're human beings people want to know that you value their time you value their energy you value their money because they're going to take up money and pay for what you are showcasing so they want to know that you value them as a human being and so when we're talking about winning friends it's not that we're calculating and we're robots we do the same thing if we were meeting someone face to face. And so you you cultivate a relationship. And so what I do is I once I built a relationship with people online, I'll take up time to come off social media and send them a message or send them an email or ask them if they want to meet. And then we do a one to one on um, using um, all the video platforms. And I don't market to them. I don't talk about my business. I don't talk about them. I just listen. I listen to what they are going through. I listen to where they are on their journey of entrepreneurship or business. I just listen to them. And it could be two or three times just listening to what they say. Sometimes people need a sounding board. Now, I'm not saying that you have to do this. Everyone's different. We all have different personalities. So I'm not forcing you to say, but this is something I love doing as an extrovert and talking to extrovert people. You know, I love taking out the time to know more about other people. And, you know, it's it's a joy to me. And, you know, what if I wasn't having the opportunity to be able to, you know, connect with people on social media, I've been living a very boring life and a very lonely life, especially with the lockdown, especially with all the things that have happened. I've made some interesting friends during this time. And I think as anyone, really, truly, truly, 
if we want to establish a brand that we want to benefit others, you know, it's all about caring for the people that we are showcasing to because they're human. They're not robots. They're human. So take that time to listen to them, you know, listen to them, listen to what they have to say. And then you can throw in your um, your value, your point, your two pence on what they have to say. So take out time to listen more. Next one is use your energy wisely. We're talking about how to win friends and crush it on social media as an extrovert. Use your energy wisely. Oh my gosh, this is so important for um, extrovert people. We are so energetic. Again, we like to be life of the party and we can just be running around. And because we're life of the party, a lot of people connect with you online. A lot of people want to, you know, um, do things with you. A lot of people want to find out what you are doing, what projects you've got going on. They want to invite you to their projects. And next week, you know, you know, your diary is just packed with lots and lots and lots of stuff. So it's important that we use our energy wisely. Use it wisely because you don't want to just be, again, taking on too much for yourself. That at the end of the day is taking you away from your goal. Remember we talked about the first one is get focused. Get focused. You've got to be focused on why you are doing what you are doing, why you're going on social media, what is your outcome. So when we go down to step five and it's use your energy wisely, when you're focused on what you want to accomplish, then you will be wise on taking and connecting with other people that are going to benefit. You don't want to drain yourself out because entrepreneurship is very draining. Growing a business is very draining. Trying to make money in our business is very draining. Trying to connect and go to the next level is very draining, if we're honest. And, you know, especially if you're an ATAP personality and you're a workaholic. And, you know, you have to make sure that you take those little steps, you know, to help you not, you know, bunk yourself down and don't get overwhelmed with it. And you want to have the joy of you growing your business. You know, it's all about enjoying it. That's the reason, you know, why I left the nine to five. So I could eventually, you know, build a business that's going to help me, you know, build a lifestyle, have get quality time with my family, have more time for myself, have more time for my passions and my hobbies and the things that I enjoy, you know. And so that's the reason why I started, you know, um, building my business in the first place. So to allow me to give me more quality time, and so I want to do that for you guys. This is the steps that I have personally done for myself and it really does work. So don't, you know, um, use your energy, you know, scarcely use it wisely. Make sure that you are protecting your energy because you are the engine of your business. You're the one that's going to allow your business to grow or be a failure. So the more that we can, you know, give energy to ourselves and we take self-care for ourselves, the better entrepreneurs the best better businesses that we will grow and the more we can connect on social media the more that we can bring build friendships and good friendships that we're not pulling from them and they're not pulling from us the more that we can be whole as an individual person you know that's key but a lot of people don't talk about this when it's growing a business you are the success of your business or the failure of your business so the more that you can take self-care for yourself the better your business will give your opportunity for your business to grow in the way that you want it to be. So use your energy wisely. The next one is have a game plan. Have a game plan. This can go hand in hand in getting focused, number one, having a game plan. Now, there's lots of ways that you could have a game plan. You know, it's not rocket science for you to plan out what you want to achieve through social media. You know, I would say, you know, take a piece of paper or obviously go on your computer and write down a paragraph or a a whole A4 sheet of paper of what you want for your business. What do you want to see in your business in maybe in six months, you know, a year, a year and six months, two years, you know, give yourself a, a plan of action, you know, and break it down into small bite-sized pieces. Sometimes when we have a bird's eye view of our dream, it can be overwhelming. When we have a bird's eye view of our dream, it can make you feel like, you know, it ain't going to happen. This ain't going to happen. And you know what? That's what happens. We And we get paralyzed and we get stuck. But if you break down your goals, if you break down your dreams into small bite-sized pieces, I mean, guys, it's 2020. Can you believe it, guys? It's 2020. And we already, what, in July of 2020? 
Next thing you know, it's going to be Christmas. Oh my gosh, don't say it. It's going to <laughs> it's even get you scary. Time goes so quickly, lovelies, right? It goes so quickly. So you look at the little steps that we've done to bring us to July, you know? So we can never stop time. Time is going to go on even if we like it or not. So wouldn't it be better if we make friends with time? Wouldn't it be better for us to make friends with our dreams and what we want to accomplish rather than chasing our dreams? We can now like be comfortable and relax that you know it's going to happen. So you've got to have a game plan. You've got to have a game plan in life. And because you have a game plan doesn't mean life is going to go smoothly for you. Let me make a disclaimer. Because you have a game plan does not mean life is going to go smoothly for you. But what happens is when craziness happens, right, when the storms come that you didn't plan for, that you weren't even expecting, come through your life because you have a game plan. Your game plan is like your boat, right? And you're in that boat. And your game plan helps you row that boat, even though the storms of life may come. Because it gives you that peace of mind, okay? Because you know what? Things happen that we don't plan for. And I can tell you for a fact, loads of things have happened in my life that I didn't plan for. But because, number one, I was focused at the beginning, and then I had a game plan, I was willing and able to weather the storms through it. I had some losses. I had some gains, but because I was focused and I was moving on with what I wanted to achieve, I was able to land standing. And even sometimes when I fall, I'll just get myself up <laughs> and dust myself off. Even if it's sometimes it takes me a while to dust myself off. We're human. That is normal. That's a normal part of life. You know, being a human doesn't mean that you're doing this. Okay. It's not like you're constantly going to be rising. Being a human means that you're going to be doing this. OK, and hopefully eventually as we mature, as we get enlightened, as we grow as individuals, as we get to love ourselves and know who we are and feel comfortable in our skin, there'll be it'll be more, you know, rather than this, it'll be more. little, And, you know, and that's that is life. That is life. You're never going to have a straight line in life. So don't even think you're going to have that. It's not going to happen, especially if you're trying to get yourself out there. Are you in business right now? And you know, you know your market and you're trying to grow it. You know, there's a lot that goes on in growing a business. You know, not all of us are going to be, you know, 50 million, you know, dollars, pounds business or 100 million or whatever. Not, not a lot of us want to have huge amounts of um, employees, you know, 25, 30. You know, a lot of us are not going to do that. You know, all of us, some of us want to build just small businesses, a small business that will help us just create a lifestyle with what we want help us pay our bills help us live a life and not you know be on the streets we want a business that's going to do that and, all, and then eventually we also want a business that's going to help the economy it's going to help the world it's going to help other people if we can merge those two things together we'll be happy people i know for me i'll be a happy person so have a game plan take up time just to think about what you're doing and maybe you even have to do it every six months you know just because you had a game plan five years ago doesn't mean that you can't revisit your game plan I'm always revisit my game plan because I'm always changing I'm always wanting new things I'm always you know the market changes life changes we all hear you know things change and so it's important that we continue to revisit our game plan don't get stuck on a game plan that you you know created two years ago and it might not be working for you if it's not working throw it away and start again you know, don't get stuck in the myth that, you know, once you have a game plan, you've got to stick to it as long as possible. That's not the case. If the game plan is not working, the quicker you can find that the game plan is not working, throw it away, start again. It's OK. It really is. Next one is keep asking questions along the way. Keep asking questions along the way. This goes very well with having a game plan. Keep asking questions along the way. You know, am I, am I you know, using my energy wisely? Am I, you know, going on social media and connecting with the right people? Am I saying the things that I want to say? Am I coming across the way I want to come across? Is the message that I'm sharing on social media helping and benefiting those that I want it to benefit? Ask yourself questions along the way. And if you find that the question, the answers are coming back to you and not what you want, then you can tweak it. You can tweak it. It's not, it's not something that's stuck. It's not something that is rigid. It's something that's portable and movable. You can move your idea, your business plan, who you are as an entrepreneur, what you want to accomplish. Those things can be changeable. 
you know, once you have a focus of the end goal of what you want, how you get there can change as long as you, it takes you to your end destination. It really doesn't matter if it moves up and down because you have to be flexible. You, you know, that's one thing you're going to have to be as an entrepreneur. One thing you have to be as a human, you have to be flexible because so much things happen in our life that, you know, allow us or causes us not to be flexible. And sometimes a lot of people don't like change. And let me tell you, if you are running your own business, if you are <laughs> building a business, if you've been in business for two or three years, you know that flexibility is one of those things that you need to have if you want to just keep going and building a, a successful business that will help you um, live the lifestyle that you want. So keep asking questions along the way. And the last one is learn to say no. We're talking about how to win friends on social media and crush it as an extrovert. Learn to say no, because we, again, we love to be get our hands in lots of the pies. We love, to be doing, we love to be doing lots of projects. We love to be the, the life of the party, going to events, doing all this kind of thing. I mean, I had a client and, you know, they were going to so many, many events and all those events, they were trying to build a business, already started the business. They weren't getting anything for it. I mean, even if it wasn't monetarily getting anything, they weren't getting anything, absolutely zero. And so because they were just enjoying going to the events and they were having a great time, you know, you can't do that as a extrovert. That again, you're going to use up your energy, right? And you're not getting anything for it. So be wise to say no. Don't just say yes to every single thing. This is something I am so learning in my business. This is something I'm learning as a person because I get reached out so much on so many things. And before I would do it because I was like, you know, get myself out of it, get myself out of it, get myself out. Of it. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. And it was wearing, it was wearing on me. It was really wearing on me because I started feeling that I wasn't being valued as a person. The more you value yourself, people will value you. So you're going to have to minimize, you know, the, the things that you do. You're going to have to learn to say no as an extrovert. Say no. Only do the things that's going to help you remember to reach your goal, to reach your destination. You know, it's going to add to your knowing your message, knowing who you are. It's going to help you in finding your lane. Only say yes to the things that's going to help you get to, to where you need to go, you know, because you don't have that time and energy. Time is going, you know, and we don't stay young forever. And, you know, the more we are stuck in a certain space and we're not moving on, people are going to pass us by. The world of vice passes by, the economy passes by. And you're thinking, you know, why hasn't this business picked up? Why isn't this business growing? Okay, because we are you know, saying yes to too many things and we bog ourselves down with other people's life and other people's projects, and other people's dreams. There's nothing wrong with supporting other people as long as along the way that you are supporting yourself too. Don't put yourself at the bottom of the pile, okay? You've got to make sure that you invest in yourself first so that you can be effectively a decent person and a whole person to uh, uh, add to someone else's life and invest in someone else's business and all that kind of stuff. Make sure you invest in yourself first, okay? Because there's no way that you can grow and accomplish and achieve all you want to do if you're just putting yourself at the bottom of the pile, okay? I can't stress that enough, especially as an extrovert because we want to go the extra mile for other people. We, again, you know, love helping people, love talking to people, all that kind of stuff. And then we have so much on our plate and then we realise where did we go wrong and when we realise that we've gone a bit away from our dream gone away from the, our business goal and what we want to accomplish so it's important that you uh, learn to say no more okay learn to say no but if you've gone through the steps that we talked about today get focused number one find your lane number two know your message number three listen more use your energy wisely have a game plan keep asking questions along the way and learn to say no this will really help you to win friends i was just looking there something's about to drop <laughs> this will really help you win friends and crush it on social media as a extrovert hopefully what i've shared with you today lovelies will truly help you so i want to do a q and a for you guys and as well if you want to jump in um it doesn't have to be now, it can be after live, or if you watch it after we finish, 
do um, jump in with the conversation. Do leave your thoughts as well on the Q&A. These questions were asked to me by a couple of people, quite a few through social media. I said I was going to come on here today and I said, what questions would you like me to answer for you? And these are a couple of the questions. So again, you can jump in as well. You can chime in and put your thoughts in. I would love to know it as well. So it says here, what's a common myth about entrepreneurship? And can you debunk, debunk it? What, what's a common myth about entrepreneurship? And can you debunk it? Common myth about entrepreneurship. I would say common myth about entrepreneurship is it's kind of confusing. A lot of people don't know what entrepreneurship or entrepreneur. When people ask me what I do, um, I say I'm an entrepreneur. And I'm like, what does that mean? For me, um, entrepreneurship or an entrepreneur is I've got my hands in lots of different pies. I, I don't just do one thing. Um, I am the founder of Rachel Academy. I do that, you know, but Rachel Academy is not my sole thing I do. It doesn't bring me the, the full income um, through that. It's a good way for me to showcase again, showcase what I do, showcase what I offer. And it's a platform for me. It's like my business card of mine. It works really well. I've got a lot of things going on on my platform. Um, and so for me, I think, again, it's important that we talked about having a game plan, knowing your game plan is key and entrepreneurship isn't easy i think that's one thing i will say it's not easy it's a very very um, hard thing to do a lot of people don't stay on the journey for a long time you know because it's confusing it's very murky but you know what once you know once you have a plan a plan is so important i mean you can't build a house without a plan it ain't gonna happen you got architects you know you got um councils around you and even to the t of where a house goes how the street looks, where they're going to put the house. If you were living in a street and the house was really, your neighbor's house was like on top of you, you know that the planner <laughs> has done a wrong job on planning that street, right? So they use a map, they plan it out, they measure lots of different things for your atmosphere, for your street to look decent, where the tree will go, where your garden goes, all those kind of things. And that's how, you know, it should be. So that's the same thing as entrepreneurship. You've got a plan. You've got a plan. If you plan, then you know where things go. We know how things fit, okay? It makes it a lot easier for you. So, you know, entrepreneurship is throwing out, like, this exciting thing and things go well. I'm an entrepreneur. And we all like the benefits of it. You know, we go and post our pictures and smile. I do it too because, again, I'm, I'm showcasing myself. But also I'm keeping it real. It's hard work. There's some days where, you know, money don't come in. You don't make no money. And you've got to have a plan. So when those days come, those days happen, you are, you know, got your hands in a lot of different things that when on this side of your business, money doesn't come in. This side of your business is making money. Okay. That's the importance of a plan. I can't stress it enough. If you want to go full time into the journey of entrepreneurship or starting a business, have a plan. Have a plan and focus on the areas that are matter most. You don't use your energy in the wrong way. So that will, that's something I would say on, you know, debunking the common myth about entrepreneurship. What do you think, guys? You know, do you think that's different? What are your thoughts on it? Let me know. I would love to know. Next question is, what advice would you give to someone wanting to enter the marketing profession? This is interesting. I get this as well about marketing again marketing is um we know we talked about industry then we talked about your sub niche marketing is your industry it covers lots and lots and lots of different topics lots of different sub niche in marketing so you need to identify what kind of marketing do you want to do because just saying the word marketing it's not going to help you you know what kind of marketing are you going to do I mean, take an example of there's so many different kind of businesses out there. And so they would look for a marketing manager, a marketing assistant to help them in a particular way with their business because they're going to have different audiences. They're going to have different products. They're going to have different industries. They're going to have different wants from their customers. The, different, the customers could be based in lots of different places. So those things affect marketing. So you need to identify from the word go, what kind of marketing profession do you want to be? That will really help you narrow down how you're going to enter the career of a becoming a marketing manager, a market system, or whatever. Find out what kind of mark, marketeer do you want to be, and that will help you on entering the market of um, a career in marketing. 
next question is are there any resources that have really helped you on your journey um i would say resources for me is i read a lot um i'm not a reader in a sense of reading books but i i have an account with audible and i download a lot of audio so while i'm working i listen to audios and i would say personal development has really helped me in my business i'm still learning i have not arrived i would not say i've arrived i'm still growing there's a lot more things to learn about life and who i am and my business my industry and all those kind of things and that's the joy of being human master talks about the things that we should focus on as a individual as a human being master was a psychologist you know many many moons ago and he talked about master hierarchy of needs things that help us as people be more better better versions of ourselves. and one of those things is continually learning so it's important that we continue to learn in every shape and form so i would say that's one thing that's helped me is willing and um, taking out the time to invest in my learning and also what's good as an entrepreneur let me as a side note the more you learn, you can actually offset it for you know your things uh, with your accounts and stuff like that. So you can do a lot of learning and you can use it as educational training and save yourself some money as well. So next question is, what do you wish you had known when you started? Well, this is a great question. What do you wish you had known when you started? Lots of things. <laughs> Lots of things I wished I knew before I got started. Um, what would I say? Um, yeah, you know what? All this balance of time, I think I didn't realise how much energy and time it was going to take for me to even be where I am today. And to continue to be there takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of time because I've got children. You know, when I started, I had four little pitneys, my little cuties. And, you know, they, they were wonderful children. They didn't cause me no bother whatsoever. But, you know, it's very difficult as a as a mother, you know, to split your time between your family, you know, and also have a husband. And also I had to take care of the home. I was working from home. And, you know, I definitely got help from all my family. But it is one of those things that drains on us as women that you don't realise that, you you know, you you don't have a lot of time to do the things that you want to do truly, truly. So it's kind of learning how to manage your time. Um, I've talked about this a lot that, you know what, maybe you need to also, if you realize that you don't have time and time is one of those things that's stopping you from, you know, taking your business to the next level or even maybe even starting your home-based business, then you're going to have to see where you can allocate time from getting outside help. You know, I remember going to an event. It was a women's event. It was a big, massive event. And um, the lady that was speaking, said something profound to me which I didn't even think about because I didn't think I was in that that status you know and she was saying that you know if you don't have time to you know clean your home or you know tidy up get someone get get outside help to help you and I was like what get outside help to help clean my house no 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 but when I thought about it and I thought you know what if you're going if you want to go and achieve something and you you're going out there to rock yourself and be a boss at what you do if you don't have time to do certain things, get outside help. Even basic things like if you don't have time to do cooking, there's lots and lots of programs and companies out there that you can buy a box of food already cooked for you. All you have to do is heat it up and boom, it's done. You know, we have to find a way to sim simplify our life as women and men. There's lots of things out there that can help simplify our life. And so for me, asking the question, what do you wish you had known when you started? is if I knew I could uh, buy back time, I would have bought back time a lot quicker rather than trying to do everything by myself. And so I'm learning so much more to buy back time by outsourcing things and asking for help and trying not to do everything myself, you know, because it, it will wear me out. And, I, I, and I've been worn out quite a few times. So that's one thing I've learned, buying back my time. Next one is what led you to this journey? What led me to this journey was 2008 crash um, with the banks and I had a really good job as a business studies teacher and, um, you know, I was dabbling with stuff but really wasn't, you know, serious about it. And then I realised, you know what, I need to find a way where I can subsidise my income and then I started the journey of entrepreneurship. Really, it was out of necessity at the beginning 
then I realized I was enjoying what I was doing, what I was learning, and then it became a passion. It became an obsession. And now I'm obsessed with it. I can't go back to a nine to five. And I don't want to go back to a nine to five. So I'm obsessed with what I do now. You know, I really am. And it's, it's exciting. I love what I do. It's like I'm also a creative person. So, you know, uh, Racial Academy gives me that space to be creative. And it, and I just I just love it. I love it. I love seeing, you know, people, you know, go from here to here and see them, you know, take the information that I give and then just skyrocket. It's, it's just it's a really great feeling when you're doing what you know that you're supposed to be doing. And sometimes you don't really know what you're supposed to be doing because it doesn't look like there's no light shining around it it's not something like you know that you think it is it's by having little you know willingness to step out your comfort zone the more I stepped out my comfort zone the more I, I realized this is the journey this is where I want to go yeah this feels good you know oh no that doesn't feel good I'll, I'll go back oh yeah that's feel good that's what I was kind of doing all the time stepping out in little small spaces so I didn't really have the full picture but I just was willing just to take baby steps and eventually became a journey so that's what I would say on that question what led you to this journey and then uh what do you think your unique skills is that has helped you become successful what do you think your unique skill is that has helped you become a successful you know what I'm a fighter I don't give up and I think as an entrepreneur as anyone in life you've got to fight crap things happen things that will knock you for six happen and natural thing that you want to do is you just want to mope and get depressed I've talked about this before guys you know depression is real you know stress is real I went through depression for a whole year because I wasn't managing myself I'm an extrovert and I was taking so much on and crap happened and when crap happened because I did wasn't focused I didn't have a game plan I crumbled on that pressure crumbled on that situation and I went through depression and it was hard it was hard and you know you you lose your self-worth you think you can't add value you think that nothing's going to change and you you get stuck in that rot of just replaying the broken record to yourself every single day and if I look back now on what led me there to that place and I will truly say again is that, you know what, I was so overwhelmed, I was trying to do so much things by myself, and I was not hanging about with the wrong people, talk about finding your lane, I was in the wrong crowd of people, and it led me down the path of losing everything, and then obviously eventually going through depression. So it's so important that we kind of take self-care. Now self-care for me is so important, because you know, I would not wish it on my worst enemy, and I would not go down there again. And, you know, just love yourself, love, love, love yourself and be good to other people. You know, the world is going through a difficult situation at the moment. Let's be real. But that doesn't take away from who you are and the value you have. You know, because people might not see your value, that doesn't mean that you're going to have to lose your value. You know, that's what I believe. The more I value myself, the more I'm genuine in giving value to other people. And I think that is what people are looking for. If we're honest, people want to be loved and be loved. You know, that is the core of life, even in business, okay? Even when we are hardcore, whatever. You know, because at the end of the day, if people run businesses at the end of the day. So for me, success is learning to love yourself and then sharing it with the world. That's why I love, and I can't stress enough, that if you feel that you have something to offer, share it to the world because someone's looking for you, someone's waiting for you to bring that product or that service. And then last question, what is your favorite memory you have when starting your business? My favorite memory, I can remember that when I had my first, um, <laughs> someone sign up to my newsletter. I remember when I was, you know, learning what I was doing when I built, was building my blog, it was on Corner Rachel Academy at that time. And, you know, I was following, you know, the steps of how you could, you know, uh, have engagement, you know, talked about having a newsletter. I remember putting the newsletter up spending days and days and days writing the content and thinking about what I wanted to say excuse me and then I put the um the message on on my blog that I had a newsletter and you know I wasn't expecting nothing at all and I think about a week later 
someone subscribed to my newsletter and I was going crazy. I was like, oh my gosh, someone signed to my newsletter and I was running around telling my husband and I was doing like my dance, someone signed to my newsletter. I was so excited and I couldn't believe it. Like, you know what, this thing works. And, you know, I still get excited when someone signs up to my newsletter because <laughs> it's that same feeling. I get so excited. I so appreciate when someone signs up to my newsletter. It makes me feel good. You know, or when someone buys your product, I still have that same excitement that I had before because I don't want to lose that. I don't want to get complacent, you know, because again, I, it's people we're working with people so when people you know show you that they're willing to invest in something that you have it makes you feel good as a person and you know that's something I remember I will never 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 forget so guys thank you so much for taking out the time to join me we talked about how to win friends and crush it on social media as an extrovert so you know hopefully what I've shared with you has helped you again let me know if you need any more tips on the subject. I will send you a, a, a link and I'll post it here. So I'm wishing you a happy Friday. Have yourself a wonderful weekend. Try and detox. Try and relax. Try and spend time with family. We only have one life and we want to make sure we live it well. Wishing you a wonderful Friday and a wonderful week. I will see you on Monday. Bye-bye, lovelies. Have a wonderful day.